Hello everyone, it's Stefan again from Corehawk 3D. This time I'll be going over the post-processing for printing an impulse slider with the hockey stick, the installation of the parts, and then any quality checks that you might need to do to make sure that you're ready to use this. Um, it's also a good demonstration in case you're curious of everything that I do before I send one of these out myself. What I have here are two impulse slider mark threes with their associated hockey sticks straight off the printer you can see that uh, there's a little bit of stringiness to them there's some um, just some kind of stuff sticking off that's just a product of the material type that i use i use petg now um, as i live in a much more humid climate than i'm used to uh, the pla doesn't work so well for me anymore and i find that the petg doesn't thermally contract nearly as much as PLA and it makes it a lot more easy to get the tolerance right because it's very very finicky for getting these in particular to work well here because if the tolerance here is too tight it's going to squeeze this ever so slightly and it's going to add friction when it slides on the rail here. I always run an actual rail from a TWCS throttle which is this guy I have another one taken apart just so I can have this ready to test every single slider I send out to make sure that it meets the standard of something I'd want to install in mine. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'll be using the orange one. This is just to give you a look at the black. Very pretty. I'm always impressed with how um, black PETG comes out. But I'll use the orange just for contrast um, and to help demonstrate this. So first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and pull the major... Um, kind of debris off of this. There's always usually a string coming off the top where the nozzle moved away after it finished printing. Um, so I'll go ahead and, and pull all the major strings off. That's because I'm about to flash it with a um, kind of a torch type lighter to burn away any of the excess and I don't want any of those strings to have enough material to, to beat up and actually become a strong piece of material attached to the part that I um, wouldn't want to have attached there. Very particularly here on the bearing mount surfaces, those have to be perfect to get the correct alignment to be able to use the tapered bearing surface feature that I've put on this to allow perfect alignment of the bearings along the rails and then again to provide the exact amount of squeeze or tolerance that I want on those to uh, minimize any kind of movement of the handle in the, uh, the base while also um, optimizing that friction because it's it's a delicate balance to walk between um, getting the perfect f um, smoothness or freedom in this direction and then absolutely no rattle in any other direction. So in case you noticed here, this is mu. That is the Greek symbol commonly used for the coefficient of friction in the um, equation for friction. Just a little bit of a nerdy note there for you. So I've removed all of the major goop. It's also something you'll want to look at, especially in... Let's see, let me get my screwdriver to point here. Right in here. This overhang prints... Well, the whole thing, first of all, prints with no support. And this is designed to kind of act like a bridge and to have nothing hanging down. It acts as a very firm backstop for the bearing so there's no sliding um, here as well in here and then over here as well um, you can see there's a little bump right there that is something that would cause the bearing to misalign if I don't remove it so I'm going to go ahead and use these snips to get in there and grab it and pull it out I'm not necessarily going to clip it off I'm going to grab it and I'm going to pull it out all right it came out nice and clean it's no longer in there you can see there's no um, parts actually sticking down on any of the other overhangs. This entire part is meant to print without any supports at all because anytime I did print with supports the space between the bearing surface and the supports that would go in here always left strings and those strings would completely foul that perfect bearing mount surface that I wanted to have. In case you're curious this design on the back is also meant to capture using the sharpest corner hide method for the slicer settings that Z seam that would also very commonly get placed in any kind of a concave shape. Every effort's been made to make sure that these remain perfect. 
each of these diameters actually has to be a little bit different than the other because they thermally contract at different rates depending on the direction that the nozzle takes around the print itself. So trust me when I tell you that a lot of time goes into making sure that these things are exactly the way they should be and they're going to give you the maximum enjoyment out of your, your throttle. So I've gone ahead and I've removed all of the major globs off of this. There's an overhang here that we can heat up and kind of just press with your finger. And then the, the, the little knob right here that the swing arm mounts to, we can also heat that up and then push that up into place with our fingernail. So very, very quick little flash here. And then I'll go ahead and push my fingernail up on that. And then on the lower one, and then maybe just flash it again if you need to. And that's looking the way it needs to. There, I don't know if you can see that, it's perfect. Same thing for this overhang right here. Just shoot a little flame up in there and then press it into place. It usually doesn't have any kind of issues. And then any other flaming on this, I'll just do to get rid of any kind of surface defects just for the more just aesthetics of the part itself. The functional kind of deburring has been accomplished at this point. All right, uh, before I do anything else to make sure that this slider is one that we're going to want to use. I'll install the bushings. Now the bearings, like the linear, the metal linear bearings are less stringent because they have so much more uh, external strength. They can't be squeezed the way these can. So if the, the bearing surfaces squeeze these too much, they'll clamp down onto the rail and it'll add friction in it. You might as well not have done this part at all. Here's a quick demo as well of the um, bearings ability to rotate. It can rotate on this axis as well as this axis. So it can it can pitch and yaw, I guess is a better way of saying that. Um, I mean, I guess of course you can roll them as well, which is a good thing to do because these bearings, correction, bushings are not perfectly round. So Again, you can see it move ever so slightly. The graphic in the listing is indeed exaggerated, just to show you what you get, but here's the actual demonstration of what happens on the slider itself to allow for that perfect alignment um, so that the variation in the rod shape, however small, but still it's still worth accounting for, is accounted for now. So as you'll see, like, the rod just slides straight through. That's That right there is what I test to every time I send out a slider. And you can see this one's got, a, I don't know if you can hear that, a little bit more friction to it. So I'll just go ahead and run it back and forth and rotate these until I get to that optimal position where it feels like it's rattling. It doesn't rattle, um, but it's smooth like butter. I'll go ahead and demonstrate the installation for the metal linear bearings now. You'll notice that inside you have four different tracks of metal linear bearings. And they're each on independent little tracks of their own. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is install each. And you'll notice, if you're doing both of these, that the metal linear bearings are actually longer than the polymer self-lubricating bushings. This has been designed to adapt to both and also still provide good backstop against any sliding through both the friction applied at the center of the bearing as well as um, the end stops. So when orienting these on the inside, make sure that you do it so that you have the two kind of in an X orientation. So you have um, one of your tracks here, another here, and then one of them kind of lower left and then lower right. That way you don't have it centered on the top and all of the force being ridden on just one track of bearings. You spread the load as well as um, there being two of them, it'll actually help center and, and add precision to the feel of your, your throttle. All right, so you can hear it's a little bit louder. This may need to be kind of pushed around in the in its slots. Sometimes you need to spin it in there to kind of get the, the bearings where they need to go. Um, and if that's not doing it, uh, you can go ahead and just rotate 
to the next orientation. Just put put the next two bearing tracks and see if they're better. It's a, it feels a little bit better, but one of these has got an out of round bearing in it that's kind of causing it to be a little bit louder. And you can kind of feel it. It's a, ve a very cyclic kind of vibration. I'll admit I'm very partial to the, the polymer linear bushings. Um, but again, these things also, these, these metal linear bearings also benefit very much from having the self-aligning feature of the, the tapered bearing mount surfaces. Now that we've determined that these bushings are in fact going to work on this slider, the rest of it's worth building because if they don't work there, that's where I stop and I throw it away. Um, and I move on to the next one. This next portion is going to be very easy. It will take one of our eight by three millimeter magnets and just press it into this hole right here. You can kind of see it just goes straight in there. Nice and easy. Hard enough that it will never ever come out um, from another magnet pulling on it, but easy enough that you can do it by hand. It's in there, it's nice and flush, looks great. Next thing will be the M3 nut. I usually, if there's like a rounded side of it, you can kind of see that's the rounded, that's the hard side. I usually do the rounded side first so it doesn't catch any edges going in. There it is, it's kind of centered in there. I'll go ahead and press it in with the screwdriver. There it is. It's in there all the way. Now, bear in mind that if you're installing this directly in your throttle, you probably don't need to install this screw right here. But it wouldn't hurt because you're going to finish aligning that nut all the way if you tighten this all the way down. Sometimes it can get in there a little bit crooked. The slider itself is good now. We'll go ahead and start working on the hockey stick. So we've got our three three by six millimeter magnets and then one more eight by three millimeter magnet that I'm gonna install in this hockey stick. Same thing we did before. Uh, you can see some strings still on this thing. I'll go ahead and remove those by hand and then burn the rest of them off just to make sure that this thing's smooth, as well as there's nothing obstructing the magnet slots. This is also designed to print without any supports, um, this being the underside, this being the top. So I guess if this desk is the print bed, it's, it's oriented like that. Um, the overhang here is not steep enough that you're gonna get any kind of curling or anything like that. And as far as getting this thing to print um, with this thin wall right here, if you need to, take your outer perimeter and set it at 0.39 millimeters, and that'll get it to go because I've dimensioned this at exactly 0.4. This surface in particular needs to be cleaned because that's going to be what hot glues or super glues into the case of your throttle. We'll go ahead and get the polarity correct by taking our slider our additional 8 by 3 millimeter magnet, putting it on that, and then holding this whole side up, and that magnet is going to go into this slot just like this, because when it, f it flips on the inside of the case, it's designed to repel it. So we'll go ahead and slide this off, keep it oriented like that, and then slide it into that hole right there. Easy day. Comes out real easy. That's the way this is designed. I'll show that at the end. Next come our three, um, three by six, correction, six by three millimeter magnets. I'll go ahead and orient them by putting them on here. And then when I take them off, I need to flip them and then put them inside whatever slots you want on this. So if you count, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine slots on this. So uh, it's going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And that will be the one that I always install it on when I send them because pretty commonly that's what the, the detent that people want the most. So that's in there. Those magnets are squirrely. They're really strong. Um, and then I'll, I'll usually go one above or one below. Again, it doesn't hurt to reconfirm the orientation of the polarity of that magnet. And I think I lost one of these guys inside this metal bearing. There we go. 
I haven't said it before, uh, careful with magnets around computers. I'm not setting a good example right now. I've got my computer right over here, and my screen's like right here. Um, luckily, I haven't had anything fly off and go attach it to s itself to like memory or the screen or anything like that. But these are designed to, to hold them snugly enough to not rattle or move around or fall out while this is mounted in the case but it's also designed to be loose enough for you to be able to take a flathead screwdriver, let me get the focus here, and stick it in the open part of the slot above the magnet, and then just pop it out, just like that. Now let's pretend that this is inside the case, and I wanted to install a magnet, let's say right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that same flathead screwdriver I'm going to put it right next to it and then from I guess my finger coming from above because I won't be able to reach under because this will be mounted in the case I'll just push it in like that. I mentioned this in my other video but you can also flip the polarity of these magnets and get really creative that way too. This one I don't see a value in that being an attractor because it's just going to hold your throttle in the 100% position in games like War Thunder or anything that has a war emergency or over 100% throttle position. This thing's pretty cool because it will push your throttle off of that 110% position and preserve your engines um, in the simulation. Another cool thing you can do is if, if you're center detent, if you're, you're a big like star citizen guy or gal and you want a strong detent, what you can do is take one of these, flip it, put it right next to it on, on the, the four side, flip this one, put it on the aft side, and what you have is a detent that you have to push through. It attracts and you have to push through it again to get out of it. And those the, the push on either side helps the attract and it actually strengthens that detent a lot. So again, there's all kinds of cool stuff you can do. You can make detents that you push through but don't attract the throttle. You can do detents that only attract it. It's up to you and it's meant to be infinitely variable. So I hope you enjoy. This is what I send out, and if you wonder why this is called a hockey stick, it's because when I send it out, it looks like this. And tell me that doesn't look like some kind of a hockey goalie holding a hockey stick. Anyways, I didn't know what to call it until I saw that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Um, please check out the installation video in the actual throttle if you're about to do that part. Otherwise, um, yeah, this is the amount of work that goes into each of these sliders before I send it out. Um, happy gaming and uh, thanks for watching.